Hi, I'm Anthony, and in this video of Battery Experts with Anton Parr, we will discuss the importance of crystallinity in characterizing cathode and anode powders. Almost every powder producer, whether it is for battery raw materials or other, has to measure the crystalline properties of their powders. This is especially true for graphite material used in the manufacturing of anodes, as well as for cathode powders. Here, the degree of crystallinity and degree of graphitization are important parameters as they will directly influence the lithium ion mobility within the battery cell. X-ray diffraction, or XRD, is usually the technology of choice. It can be used to get information on the crystal structure, crystallite size, and phase purity of electrode powders. For XRD measurements, there are different sample holders from which to choose, depending on the type of material being analyzed. For example, whether or not the material is sensitive to air, whether the quantities available are limited, and so on. For electrode powders, a front-loading type holder with a cavity is usually enough. It can also be beneficial to work with specialized holders that limit any signal coming from the sample holder itself. Carefully fill in the powder, then gently tap it and flatten it with a glass slide to make sure it is completely flat in order to avoid errors during X-ray diffraction analysis. Then place it on the sample stage in the XRD instrument. XRD instruments can be configured with different X-ray wavelengths by changing the X-ray tube. This may be copper, which is typically used in battery material analysis, molybdenum, or silver. This will depend on the geometry needed for the specific sample being analyzed. In an XRD instrument, many factors affect the sensitivity of the measurements. Primarily, the radius of the goniometer, here the larger the better, and the sensitivity of the optics. There are also different beam geometries and optics to choose from, such as Bragg-Brentano, various monochromators, and focusing or parallel X-ray mirrors. Here we are going to perform measurements for a well-prepared graphite sample with both Bragg-Brentano as well as parallel beam mirror geometries. For that, in the software we choose Coupled Scan as the scan type for reflection measurements. Other parameters are set as default values, but can be changed according to sample size and type. Typically, the 2 theta range is adjusted based on the sample type as well. For graphite samples, most peaks will be between 10 to 80 degree 2 theta. Then we can adjust time per step depending on the quality of the outcome data required. The parallel beam mirrors are suitable for measurements of solid electrode powders as they compensate for possible peak shifts, which result from the X-rays penetrating too far into the sample. Here, the peak position in the black curve, which is measured with parallel beam, is the correct 2 theta. However, the peak position in the red curve, measured with Bragg-Brentano geometry, is slightly shifted. And such shifts can be corrected by spiking the sample with a reference material with known peak positions. So, measuring the degree of crystallinity and degree of graphitization of electrode materials is a necessary step in the early stages of electrode manufacturing.